Hello and welcome to the uh, first episode of the fourth random playthrough of Conquest of Elysium 5 on my YouTube channel here. Now we've done uh, the Tolkien, the Dryad Queen and the Baron so far. And I think the next we're gonna go for will be the Senator. Now we're gonna go on a large map. We're gonna turn battle reports on and we're gonna activate Wild though. Now what that means is that, uh, you can see a little bit of info pop up on the lower side here. Just gonna read that real quick. Most independents will be significantly boosted in numbers. It will be more difficult to obtain and keep resources. This setting might be suitable for a team of players that want more challenge from the independent forces. I find this is, uh, you know, it makes things a little bit harder. But it's the same for everyone, so my enemies will have the same struggle. We're gonna add one more AI, and we're gonna click plus on the keyboard a few times there to get them up to count difficulty meaning that I think they start with a bit more units uh, I've heard that I'm not 100% sure about that but I know 100% sure that that means that they have a uh, 100% boost to all income uh, either way what I like to start by doing is just uh, change these colors a little bit so that we don't have uh, just like the base colors that we're up against. And just uh, have a little bit extra, another added layer of replayability. Now, since we're going for Senator, we'll go for a red color. And this red color right here seems pretty decent. Now, real quick, we're gonna read the law and the abilities of the Senator before we get going here. So, during the rise of the Empire, new tactics and troops were developed to crush human dissidents and eliminate the barbarian threat. These tactics gave birth to the soldiers called Legionnaires who were usually equipped with large shields and javelins. Newly recruited Legionnaires were placed next to veterans to learn the art of war. This system was very effective against the humans the legions were supposed to fight, but its success against other forces present in Elysium has been more varied. The Legionnaire is a formidable soldier by human standards. The large shield is more effective than most shields found in Elysium, and the javelin can be used from a distance, which is very effective for large squads of Legionnaires. The well-disciplined Legionnaires can use simple wooden watchtowers as citadels in addition to the sturdy stone guard towers used by all other warlords. The Senators can... <coughs> my bad... The Senator can sometimes buy gladiators or net-wielding retiarii to supplement his legions. Besides the ordinary wizards who may take uh, service with any warlord, the senator may hire augurs, priests diviners of the empire. Sometimes followers of the various esoteric cults extant in the empire can also make their services available to bolster the senator's forces. All senators are of noble birth and battle for positions of political influence. Being a senator leaves only one political position left to acquire, emperor. A senator who is able to bribe or assassinate his way through the competition can replace the current emperor and hold a great coronation ceremony held in the capital. Uh, but being the emperor is just the beginning of the senator's divine aspirations. Got that right. We're going for world domination, baby. Anyway, its ability says 50% increase to golden trade. So that kind of bridges the gap a little bit between me and the AIs that have 100% increase to, well all income. Uh, watchtowers can be used to citadels. Receives free units from guard towers and watchtowers. I think it's just veilays and they slowly trickle in over time. It's not like significant but it can be useful. Augurs can use scrying to gain information from distant places. Revelers can bring forth satyrs and maynads. Maynads? Maynades? Mayonnaise? I, I don't know how to say that. From ancient forests. A senator can proclaim himself emperor if he conquers the capital. Access to more wizard mercenaries, even without having a magic library. So there, there are quite a few casters. A lot of, uh, you get access to a lot of these serpent magic uh, guys. But primarily they seem to pop up the most before you get like a magic library. Uh, that being said, we're set up and ready to go, so let's get to it. We're gonna call this guy uh, Rex Rufus. Now, Rex is uh, the name of a German Schaefer. 
in a <laughs> police dog TV show that I used to watch as a kid. And it also happens to be the Latin word for king, I believe. Rufus, I believe, is Latin for red. Um, or like a the red or something. Like a, it, it's it's a, kind of a common name for, like I don't know, ginger people or something. Like I got red head myself, red hair myself, so like I'm not trying to hate on gingers. But, uh, you know, we will. We will consume your souls. We are collecting freckles. So far, I don't have any freckles, though. I really need to get off that, um, off the chair and start getting some souls. But, uh, that's neither there nor here. Uh, so yeah, Rex Rufus, since we're going with red, I feel Rufus is fitting, and we're just gonna get to it. Let's see what kind of spawn we can get. Please don't be in the snow. It is not in the snow. We got a little ton of a city. I mean, a town. Uh, that's neat. There's a farm and a village easily available here. We got some open area. There's three bandits and six slingers here. Um, cool, cool, cool. Okay, we got a um, centurion here. We're going to rename him to Vicinius. I don't know, I, just, I played the Senator a few times already. Uh, I always just <laughs> renamed the first guy to Vicinius. I don't know, the name seems appealing to me. Now, let's have a quick look at our units though. We got Veilace, that's like the cheapest, most crappy units the Romans have. Uh, sorry, I will be saying Romans by accident many times throughout the play out, uh, the playthrough here. So forgive me for that. <laughs> I mean, they are obviously based on Romans. Veilace, based on Velites. Um, but yeah, they got no armor, they do have a small shield that can block uh, 1 to 0 damage in melee and 0 to 2 damage in, uh, in range. Uh, 5 hit points, nothing special, I mean, they can throw a javelin once per battle, so that can give them a little bit of an edge, I suppose, in the early game against weaker units. We have Hastatus, based on the Hastarii. And, uh, okay, so basically, these are skirmishing troops, right? They're like, screening troops, basically, as the Romans used them for. These are the first actual, uh, stay-and-fight type melee line troops, also armed with javelins. Got one armor, and they got seven hit points. They're a little bit more durable than the, uh, Veilace, particularly because they have this large shield here, which every other Roman... Infantry unit like this will have except for the Veilis since they're more light skirmishing troops as I mentioned now a large troop will uh, Block 0 to 2 melee damage and 0 to 4 range damage, which is pretty decent uh, Strength morale magic resistance. It's nothing special, but it certainly isn't bad for like a human troop We also have the princeps uh, Based on a principes principiari, I don't know something like this uh, this would be the second line. So the way that the Roman warfare worked is that first you have the skirmishers that kind of shield. You know, they throw some javelins, they play around with the enemy skirmishers a little bit, throw some javelins, mess about. And they also have the um, effect that they block vision to the army behind them. So that uh, it's easier to kind of like for any commander to just relocate his troops without the enemy necessarily being privy to that. Um, and then, when they're done, they will retreat behind the lines of, uh, Hastarii. They will be taking on combat first. Now, when they are kind of worn out, etc., they will rotate with the Principes that come in as a second line. And, uh, hopefully it ends there. But there is the Roman saying, it has come to the Triarii. That means that the third and last line of soldiers the more veteran, like the further back you go, the more veteran the soldiers will be. So the Triarii, they serve many purposes in actual Roman warfare. Um, they kind of stood there looking menacing at the back of the line, so right, they're ready to step in if needed. Um, and also, they're kind of standing there a little bit to, to make sure the guys in front don't run away. And they're standing there with a the spear and a shield and a heavier armor and such, and they're... You know, you don't you don't want to run back towards them necessarily and be seen as a coward and 
hey, maybe they <laughs> stick a spell in you, you know? I don't know. But uh, yeah, let's get to the game instead. So we have the Princeps, which has a little bit more hit points, strength, morale, same magic, resistance, and armor. Also the shield. Uh, javelin and a little bit more damage. 1 to 6 with the short sword compared to uh, 1 to 5 with short sword for the high status. You also have the uh, heavier Triarius, which they're slow moving because they're heavy infantry. Um, and yeah, they, they got a little bit more armor. As you see, they don't necessarily fight in the front front line. They're in the front line, but in the back of it. So I feel like this uh, class uh, in the game is... Uh, um, it, it plays pretty well with what like the Romans were actually about. It's an interesting class, I feel. And you got ballistas you can get, and uh, other siege equipment will pop up from time to time, but obviously the ballistas is fairly decent. And you can buy the standard. Now, I usually don't get too many of these unless I have a, quite a bit of gold to go around. Or in a pinch. If like one extra guy could make a difference. Uh, they have local leadership, meaning they grant a morale bonus to all friendly units within two squares. Uh, but they die really fast. Usually they're centered in your army, so they go up against the strongest melee units the enemy has right away. And... Uh, they're not exactly significantly stronger than any of the other troops, so they're gonna get wrecked quite often. Which is why I find it's not really that useful to spend. I mean, you can spend 20 gold to get one of those, or you can spend 50 gold to get uh, five princeps. So that's half price per one, and even less if you go down in quality of troops a little bit. Now, um... There's many ways you can do this. What I'm going to do actually first though is just... I'll send Rex Rufus out. Oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Um, I was just going to have a little look here and then kind of head back. Um... <laughs> Seriously. Oh my god. Okay, well we're going to take this guy with the rest of the army and send, send him over here. It's... I don't want the center to get fucked, and we only have one guy now to move units along. If I actually took some units with the senator here, I wouldn't have had to um, move the entire army in for this fight, but... Uh, and I guess these guys could come and mess with our outpost now, because I didn't leave any units to defend that. Uh, actually, I, I, I'm gonna get that standard now, just so he can stand behind her and just look menacing, I guess. It's not gonna stand a chance if these guys decide to go for him, I think, but... Yeah, oh my god. Well, we're off to a great start here. Uh, we just pass the turn, I guess. Ambush spy. Okay, I see if I had just a little army with the uh, Senator, this would be fine. So we kind of wasted our first turn. Fantastic. Okay, I'll take a few units with the Senator. Let's go with five Veles and five Princeps. And I will just scout a little bit. Okay, so we're. Uh, been a lot of these kind of spawns uh, on a playthroughs. Now the cup. Now, no, this is actually just a second out of four. So, uh, but yeah, we'll send Vicinius back here. It's kind of nice. We don't have to worry too much about too many directions early on, which is quite nice. Um, we can just take Vicinius and uh, attack those and take back that town. And there seems to be a lot of bandits and slingers in the area. Here. Maybe there's a brig and lair around. Uh, we'll see. Now, they deny us 6 gold income per turn by taking this and 2 trade, which is annoying, but we're going to take it back. Unfortunately, they, they now have the wolves in the town to defend themselves from with their slingers. I see that we're doing a bit of damage, and uh, yeah, we could take some casualties, sir. That could have easily been avoided if I didn't send my senator out into a damn ambush. Yeah, we're actually taking a shit ton of uh, casualties. We're off to a fantastic start. We lost 10 units already. Just taking back what we already had. So yeah, this uh, this has been uh, fantastic here. A bandit and three slingers. You know what, I'm gonna just... Let's take the coastal hamlet. And let's take that. And uh, you know what, I'm just gonna attack this with uh, Vicinius. So I could have sent him into the forest first and actually had a little bit more info. Uh, but yeah, well, I mean, 
Despite the absolutely horrendous start we just had here, we are actually in a good position on the map, I feel. From what I know anyway. I mean, we had another village, a farm, and a coastal hamlet right down here, already doubling our gold income. Uh, so, that's pretty sweet. What we're gonna do is just give Vicinius the remaining surviving guys, give him command over them. And that's a shitty little sea dog that could call in and kill my senator, which would be so fun. I guess we just send Vicinius there to guard him so that doesn't happen. Wow, this is just not going really well right now. We're gonna get some gladiators actually, just in case they wanna step onto her. And we can link them up with Rex Rufus as well. Alright, so he doesn't have anything with them? No? Okay, now he has the gladiator, so he's just gonna stay there for now. We're up against nine archers, a captain, and two spearmen here. Out of the sea dogs. Um, I kinda wanna just take them out, if I'm honest. So they don't come roaming in from the ocean. That's actually quite annoying when they do. So this will be snow during the autumn. So we're not that far north, and we're not that, like, who cares, right, that this is snow during the autumn. Everything's gonna be snow, basically, during the winter, but... It's fine. I, if, I think we got a good starting location. It's just the start itself wasn't too good. Uh, we took no casualties fighting them, at least, so that's good. Uh, we're just gonna save our resources a little bit. Actually, we're gonna get five Veilies, I think. We should, however, be saving gold, but... I don't know, we can send him back out again now, I'd say. Because uh, we don't really need to worry about defending this. Uh, but his army is kind of weak, so we should be a bit careful. Uh, there's another two gladiators and Betiari or whatever they're called we can hire. High Lord and four knights. Don't necessarily want to fight them. Just want to get some intel of the area around me. And I kind of want to take this town right here. Uh, now let's start trading, uh, trading for iron. Because I want to have a couple of ballistas with me before I attack there, I think. Just, we've already taken so many casualties. We can't keep, like, pushing it, I feel. We can, however, go for those snakes. Although, oh, they do have venomous bite. Wait, they do sell damage? Why do they do sale damage? Is it because it's winter? They usually do damage. Not much, but a little bit. That's weird. Don't know why that's the case. Um, as you can see, they have 1 to 10 poison damage. Uh, the larger snakes have less poison damage. Like the serpents have 1 to 5. Uh, and that, you will find that in nature, that, that's pretty much the case, like, younger animals are more poisonous uh, than adults of the species, simply because uh, they just haven't learned how to, like, control, there's many reasons for it, one of them is, like, they don't know how to control the poison glands or whatever, so they just, like, they bite you and then they inject you with all the venom, whereas a larger snake might not. Uh, and it's kind of with frogs as well, like, I mean, toads are to some degree poisonous, not really does humans, but then you have these, like, tiny little frogs around the Amazon forest, or just touch them and you die, you know, lick them and you get, like, a hallucinogenic effect and then you're dead. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna move on here and hopefully not lose anything in this battle, but let's have a look and see. Mm, yes, that worked out pretty well. Alright, uh, spring is there, so that is good. Sling on bandits there. Okay, we're gonna take this farm as well, because I do want to increase our income. Six troglodytes guarding this isle, man. Uh, I've never seen this before, but holy hell. They look like, uh... They look like if you played Pokemon or, like, Gen 1. They look like Hitmonlee. That just turned demonic. Uh, but either way, they got 1 to 8 bite damage, 0 armor, 25 hit points. Okay, so they're not actually as dangerous as they looked, except they have trample with 3 damage. That could be, um, let's just say, inconvenient. Okay, we overrun, overrun those guys. 
Uh, we could get this level up, but we're not going to do that just yet. We are going to... In fact, uh, I would like to take out those wolves right there. We're just going to send both our armies down there, and then we're going to have both of them also attack the uh, Halberdale cell next turn. So we can take this village. Kind of saving my gold a little bit to see if we can get... Five archers I'll take for, for the gold we have, I think, though. Yeah, there was no casualties there. So can I get both the scouts and archers? Yes, so... You can't recruit archers, you just get... Well, you can, obviously, because we're doing it right now, but it's like randomly when you can. You can't always do it. So they have a range of 5 and damage 1 to 3. They're not like super duper, but they are certainly handy to have. So we're going to get those, and we're going to get the scout, because it's also nice to have scouts, so you can actually use the acute sensibility to see stealthy units, or acute senses. Uh, and now we're going to just kind of walk around here, see what's up. There's another town, okay. This isn't the worst spawn I've ever had with the... Uh, I was about to say the Romans, though. I mean the... Um, uh, the Senate, though. This guy might roam, so I think we take him first. Although the village will provide us more gold, but... And here's the Serpent, so I can now illustrate what I talked about earlier. So they're 1 to 5 uh, poison damage. Instead of uh, 1 to 10. Which you'd think it'd be the other way around, right? The bigger and better, so... But uh, it, that is not the case. Please, no casualties. Yes, no casualties, because I really don't want to take any more of those right now. We have already taken plenty. Um, okay, so we're going to do it this way now. Uh, I think we'll take... Vicinius and attack those serpents. In fact, maybe we can overrun them. Maybe we can't, though, so... Oh, bridge. I'll take that, and then we'll attack the serpents. Now I need one, two, three. Yeah, so we can go and take this coastal hamlet with Rex Rufus, sir, and that's another port town. Just gonna, Oh, that's another coastal hamlet. Actually, I'm quite liking the starting location. There's a lot of income to be had, though. Except, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't like that we got ambushed straight off the bat. That just kind of hampered my plans up a bit. Uh, we're going to get this other scout here as well, so both of our armies can have scouts. And we're just going to see. We're going to take what is easy to take here, and then we're going to go back. Senator will just go directly back, and without an army, and the other guy will get the army and go through this way. So we just search out a little bit more, take this farm, etc. And, uh, yeah, then we can uh, start reorganizing a little bit. Okay, so... How they look in hit points wise, a few units are damaged, we got lost an eye, never healing wound, that's annoying, festering wound, that's even more annoying, that generally just means certain death at, uh, at some point in time. Um, okay, what I will do is take this Hamlet here first. Couldn't recruit any special. We could recruit a Centurion, actually. Uh, which I kind of want to do. So that we can have one that's separate that can take the siege equipment with him. Uh, Augustinius. Justinius. Ballistius, maybe. Ballistius. Because he's going to be. Uh... Just so I quickly remember that he's the guy with the ballistas. He's going to get some ballistas soon. We are trading two iron for two gold per turn. So in uh, eight turns, we can get a ballista. Battle. Oh, these are... I would like to have a serpent acolyte, actually. Or more, I would like a serpent priest more, since they have... Uh, uh, we can have a quick look at them. Why not? Uh, so... Serpent Magic level 1, and that's not really that much good in Serpent Magic level 1, but level 2 you can start. I mean, there are some useful stuff, like don't get me wrong, you, you get a lot of these, and they are just kind of whatever, but they can be good also. Um, that being said, I'm gonna take Vicinius here, give all the units to him, and we will attack the village here, and send... Rex Rufus back to pick up some more units and hopefully not get overrun by those uh, knights right there. 
we have enough base defense that they can't really mess with us, I think, but yeah, we'll see. Hopefully they go away. I would I would prefer that. Okay, crush them, no casualties, fantastic. Yeah, it looks like they went away. Gonna not go too far. Oh, there were some hills still. I didn't realize. Uh, 24 units, sir. Uh, we could even maybe take on the troglodytes, if I'm honest. But the uh, trample is a little bit annoying, and we have some damage to some of our units, so... What we're gonna do is take these bears on, and I wanna go and claim the uh, bridge here. The bridges give us one gold, and, uh, well, yeah, they're not, like, super good or anything, but, I mean, one gold is one gold. So, uh, anything adds up, particularly with our 50% uh, increase to, uh, to gold income. So, let's see, we have a uh, Gedurus, Gedurus, the Augur here. And, ah, yes, as you can see, he's got Farsight and Acute Senses, so he kind of acts like a scout. I think we're going to get him, in fact. Because uh, it's just very really good. Like, he's a scout, but better. Like, he's not a caster. He just... Well, I mean, he can scry. Uh, it costs a little bit, 3 gold. But let me just use that to show you. We're going to scry... There. Right, it shows you, like, 9 tiles of stuff. Actually, uh, now I kind of want to go down here. Because the captain and ten crossbow men. Uh, we'd have to cross the bridge two units at a time in a line. Unfortunate, because I want to go down here and take these poorly defended things, if I'm being honest. But I don't want to do that when they are there. So, I'm going to go up here, I'm going to go here, and we're going to attack this instead. Maybe come back and deal with them after. I think this army can just roam around. We can just go and get some reinforcements, actually, with Rex. So, until we can get... Uh... Now, we'll just send them back up here. Get the ballista, then attack here. And uh, then we'll take it from there. I think. It is probably not the most optimal and efficient way to do it. But it should work. Hopefully it doesn't come back to bite us in the ass that we play it a little bit slow like that. Now I got 20 Pike and Nails for 218 gold. That is not really a good deal. Uh, 200 would be the base price for them. So, well, maybe it is a good deal actually. Because usually with Baron, they do cost a little bit of iron as well. So it'll be 200 gold and 20 iron. So we'll get like two gold off first. Since one gold, we trade for one iron. But let us get some more of these archers, because uh, always recruit archers, in my opinion. If you get a chance to and you have the economy, you don't need to save the money for something else, you can get some archers, get some archers. They can come in handy, you can use them as uh, a defensive force, or just anything else you like, really. But also when we're going to be attacking this town, it could be good to have some range units that can just keep putting pressure on their uh, parapets. I believe that's what it's called. Yeah, the parapet. Palisade parapet. Where the enemy archers would be standing, so. Let us, uh... Envisio. I'm gonna call this guy, because he can uh, sky around and give us vision. We don't need to go that much, actually. We can probably... Did it cost any uh, action points to do this? Let's see. I'm not actually sure. I haven't skied a lot before. Let's see what's, like, over there. Aha. Uh -huh. We're up against the Scourge Lord. Alright. Um. Yeah, well, it's not something we need to think about just yet. Uh, kind of a good sky click there. And it did, in fact, uh, consume his entire turn. So, I mean, instead of having him with an army, I guess we could just have him here and just pay three gold every turn, just sky some location and get the information, which, you know, obviously could have its advantages. Uh, that being said, let us move on. Battle in the forest should be win with hopefully no casualties. 
Yep, no casualties. Winter, sir. That's always the, the good fun that we're looking for. Another three turns we can afford a ballista, though. I misclicked. I meant to send him up here, but instead I went into the forest and kind of depleted my entire turn there, but it's fine. Let's just keep skying, actually. So, if I zoom out, what's over here? There's a land over there. No, that's probably the edge of... Okay, so we're on the northeastern edge of the map. Let's see what's further down here. We got some desert, there's a gem deposit. An oasis. Well, it's just good to know. Three gold, it really isn't. It really isn't that expensive. Hmm. Right, Serpent Acolyte for 65 gold, Renata for 60 gold, Spearman for 104 gold, so with the Senator faction you get a lot of uh, spellcasters of various types, which is quite interesting. I, I, I really like this, because you get like a good blend of just like stuff you find in the Empire, so to say. Which is, uh, I like it, I, I really like this class. And it feels like it's probably kind of noob friendly as well, for some new players to get into the game. We're skying over here, there is a port city. Hard to tell if that's just a separate island or if it's like land comes down here, but... Hey, the more you know! Right? What did there go? Right there, okay. Kinda wanna take him out. Just so he doesn't stumble onto one of our farms, so... Something. So we're actually gonna do that real quick. Yeah, might as well keep skying. Why the hell not? Uh, what's there, for instance? Some dares. If we have a lucky click, we can <laughs> feel like I'm playing Minesweeper here, you know? Like, <laughs> is this the one, this, that, and what's around this one? Like, I don't know. Uh, Minesweeper and Elysium. Uh, either way, spring is finally here. Unfortunately, we can't afford these archers that we could recruit there, but that's fine. Uh, we're gonna go for a scout. We're gonna go for a ballista. No, no, it's 50 iron. I am an idiot. Um, hmm. Well, we could probably just take this town out of what we have, to be fair. Did I recruit some? No. Okay, well, I'm not going to wait another. Uh, for another 24, that'd be 12 turns, 2 years, but no, that's a whole year. I'm not going to wait another whole year before we attack that. We're going to just go with, um, I'd say, let's scrape together some princeps, so just so we have a little bit stronger units with us. And we're going to wait until next turn. Ballistius, uh, it's kind of useless at the moment, I suppose. We could get the Serpent, well, we could get, but we can't afford it, and right now I'm going to use the gold and more princeps anyway, just so we have those extra um, uh, so we have these extra Javelins. Wow, I had a brain fart though. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to leave the scouting units out of this because I don't want to, to lose them. And we're going to leave this auger out of it as well. We might link him up with um, Vicinius soon though. Okay, we're going to rename this guy too. Let's call him Germanicus. Right, 21 units, plus 12, no, 24, I mean, we're outnumbering them quite a bit. we got 10 archers that can keep firing and laying down fire on the parapets, so, and then we have front lines, and, you know, the back lines there, Velites, that can all throw one javelin at least, so hopefully that's enough to shut down quite a few archers. And let's sky. This time, bingo. That was not bingo. 
But now we know that's ocean, at least. Either way, so I think uh, if this army is large enough, we can... No, I don't think it's large enough to take this or that just yet. We should probably have a little bit of siege equipment for that. So we're going to leave these two towns, the port town and the regular town here. But I think we're going to go down here, maybe clear out the Rai Tower. I don't remember what was in the town here, but I know that these were not well guarded at all. So we can go down and take them with this army and then get together another army that we can start sending west. But for sure we know that there is income potential here. We don't know what's there, so I want to just save it and go for what I know is good. Alright, let's see how this went down. Okay, so far so good. Not really doing that much damage except this guy to wrecking him pretty hard. Now keep in mind they have 0 to 4 potential damage reduction against ranged units with a large shields. Which is quite handy. Now yeah, our archers are pushed up now and attacking. As you can see we are doing some damage to the uh, archers here, but they have a lot of... Um, like what is that? Um, wall cover. Units standing here will be more difficult to harm. A value of zero to the wall cover. Value times three. What? A value from zero to the wall cover value times three will be subtracted from any incoming range damage that is not armor negating. Protection from melee attacks will only be zero to three points. Regardless of the wall cover value. Ah, right, okay. Yeah, right, I get it. Okay, so. This is wall like fortification level 1, so you take that times 3, so it can reduce 0 to 3 damage to be up here. Uh, oh, is that how it works actually? Uh, does it count as like armor, or does it count as just straight damage reduction? I don't know. Uh, but you can have 0 to 6 be the value on fortification level 2. I'm not 100% sure on that, actually. Um, but also, standing on the wall, you get better range. Uh, since, you know, you're more elevated. Uh, I'm gonna have to look into that about the walls, actually. Just so I have the 100% uh, correct one on that. I don't like it when the archers shoot the gates. I think, in my opinion... I would make it so that archers wouldn't attack the gates if uh, I programmed this game. I know it's just random and they attack anything within range and la di da and you, you have no control over it, but it's just like, in real life though, like in real warfare, say the Romans wanted to take down a gate. Would they smash it the fuck down with a battering ram and take it down quickly and easily with a few punches at it? Or would they shoot 2,000 arrows and just basically strengthen the wall with another layer of feathers on the end of it? I mean, flaming arrows, sure. Regular arrows are just going to stick slightly in the wall and do pretty much nothing. They're not going to break the wall. Like, maybe if it's like a bamboo wall or something. But not even then. Like, it's arrows. The thin, penetrating things. It's just... You, you want more like a brute... Bashing force kind of thing usually I would say to break down a wall uh, So therefore I feel like it is such a waste when they are shooting at the walls I feel like that's something that wouldn't be necessarily prioritized by archers in uh, Actual war But hey, we managed to take it with only uh, two casualties I mean, I'm not like saying I'm not hating on the game for that or anything. I'm just saying I feel it doesn't necessarily make a hundred percent sense. That being said, I think we're past the 30 minute mark now, so let us call this a day with this episode. So I'm gonna say thank you for watching and let you know that I would appreciate if you would consider liking this video if you indeed did like it. And maybe subscribing to my channel as well. If you want to see some more content in the future, I can tell you that it would certainly help me out on the, uh, in the sense of growing my channel. Or in that regard. 
Uh, either way, there's always a comment section where you can tell me what kind of an idiot I am. So, you know, let loose, I guess. Spew the toxic internet bile as much as you want. I'm not going to be able to stop you, so... Either way... Yeah, well, I hope you enjoyed it. And with that, I bid you farewell.